So have you ever considered something to be your rival? How about an antagonist? Well, birds are my little brother's absolute mortal enemy, and we're going to talk about why today. First, though, before I jump into that, uh, let's talk about the art. Now, the art in this uh, goes along with the last one that I posted that was just a speed paint of two icons. These are going to be, I I've mentioned it before, I'm going to be revamping my Patreon at the start of December. And these two images, I think I'm using two, I might be using three. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But these images in this video are actually going to be the display icons for my different Patreon tiers. My brain with the way it works, I had this idea with, um, you know, my screen name is Strawberry Nova. So my brain took that with strawberry, you know, a fruit and Nova, you know, space. And my brain went strawberry, strawberry, stra starberry, and it just kind of ran with it. Now that said, if I, if I include the final one, which is a picture of like what I drew as a representation for a starberry, let me just say that good grief finding and trying to collect images for inspiration, because I do that a lot. I don't really have them up on my screen because I have developed a habit and it's difficult for me to change habits of pulling up my references and things on my phone and having it setting beside my tablet while I draw, especially while I sketch. And that'll, that could be anything from poses to inspiration for hairstyles or color palettes or anything like that. And with this, finding inspiration for a starberry, which is something that sounds like it would be very easy to find a reference for, like you're just like, oh, a starberry. I bet somebody's, I bet a bunch of people have come up with like little thoughts and ideas and stuff like that before. Oh my gosh. If anybody's played Kingdom Hearts, you know exactly where I'm going with this. The majority of inspiration for anything that I typed in in regard to like star-shaped fruit inspiration, it was either, what, what popped up most often was like the durian fruit from Animal Crossing New Leaf, or, most prominently, Pow Poo Fruit from Kingdom Hearts. Trying to find something that was actually, like, something I could use for inspiration that wasn't just Pow Poo Fruit was so frustrating. And honestly, I'm, I'm pleased with the final result. I am, but trying to find anything for inspiration to give me ideas drove me up the wall. It was so difficult and it absolutely frustrated me to no end. But that's that's the whole thing with this. And I'm going to have a lot of fun with revamping my Patreon. There is going to be, um, I think right now, the $20 tier is my highest one. There's technically going to be one more. But that said, there's going to be kind of a mail club component to it going forward. Like one, um, like, you're gonna have one that's a sticker club where you get, like, two or three stickers every month and they're gonna be custom designed. Well, I say custom designed, I don't mean custom for every person. I mean they're going to be specifically designed for that month. It's it's going to be a matter of, like, a theme being voted on. And then, like, the next level up of the mail club is you get stickers and a print. Like, a little postcard print kind of thing. And I think it's gonna be really neat and really fun. And you'll be able to vote on themes. I think what I'm going to do is each month I'm going to have... Um, a lot of it's going to be based around Trace. However, and I will get into talking about my new little idea for a story before too long in a video soon. I will let you know what the... It has, like, two timeline components to it. One of them being essentially like a how they met story and then one that focuses on a more advanced story. The how they met story for the characters in the new idea is going to be called like love at first fight and I think it's going to be very cute and entertaining. I just think that's going to be a lot of fun but you'll have for the stickers and prints you'll have some fandom stuff, Trace, and some of my other personal projects with characters and with Trace where I've got past and modern like say a good example is I already have the ideas for the print and the stickers for December. The stickers are modern characters. The print is past characters from Trace. And I think that that'd be a neat little, neat little idea to kind of flip flop them. But I'm getting really distracted and into a tangent on Patreon when I need to not. Because I will be doing like a little small video on December 1st whenever it goes, you know, whenever the revamp goes live. So I, I need to stop 
jabbering about this now and get back to the story. Especially because everybody's here not to hear me ramble about this, but to hear me tell about why birds are my brother's mortal enemy. So let's get back to that. So putting it simply, my brother and birds never really got along, at least while we were kids. And I have two stories to demonstrate that. Now first let me clarify, D does not hate or dislike birds. He's just had a couple of hilarious encounters with them when he was a kid, and the stories honestly make all of us laugh and crack up a lot. And I do think that with this, there, there's two separate stories. One sticks in my mind more prominently. The other one I had to ask Andy to clarify details just because at the time I think I blocked a good amount of them out. But in the one, I think it was honestly very funny. We went to the Knoxville Zoo. And first off, let me just say, we are not going to get into a whole zoo and anti-zoo debate in the, in the comments. We're not. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to talk about a funny story. But let me just say, we'd been walking around all day at the zoo. And my younger brother was always the type to be very energetic and talkative and silly and loud. Which made this even funnier. I think we had sat down for a bit of a break and we were near some of the, the exotic birds. I want to say, like, they were parrots something to that effect and they were very gorgeous birds I do remember that they were very pretty but of course they were being very loud and I think where at the time I know that Dee had never been to a real big zoo before not not that I can recall anyway and he was fairly young at the time because let's see here I was about 14 so he would have been about mm, eight and well he was getting tired of some of the noise the birds made so they were squawking, they were screeching, you know, making bird noises, as birds do. Especially birds that are in a cage. Even if it's a big one, they're gonna squawk, of course, because they're in a cage. And he goes over to them, he finally gets tired of the noise. He gets up, he goes over towards them, and yells at them at the top of his lungs to shut up. Well, the birds go quiet for a second, which surprised us. Like, all of them. Go dead silent for a second. And we think, <laughs> are they gonna actually be quiet? And then all together, all at once, they just screech at him. Just top volume, far louder than they were before. They screech just loud. And of course, he's eight. He panics and runs back to us. <laughs> and Andy remembers it a lot more distinctly than I do. But it was just, it was hilarious, especially the look on his face when they screeched at him. Because he clearly did not expect it at all. And he just... The level of just eight-year-old panic in this kid's eyes. And we're like, uh-huh, yeah, you're not going to scream at the birds to shut up anymore, are you? And he's like, I didn't mean to make him do that! And I loved it, but that's not even the funniest story. The funnier one is the next one. But that one is one that we tell pretty frequently, especially if we're talking about silly things that happened when we were kids. And there's a lot of those kind of stories. And I think I will definitely have to tell some about those at one point, just because... They're so much fun. But the second one, we always happen to have a, um, we happen to have a family reunion at a particular state park around here. It has a big lake, not uncommon for state parks around here. And of course, as is common at state parks, what is a common sign you'll see, especially if it has a lake? Do not feed the ducks. There's a reason for that sign. There's a big reason for that sign. D learned the reason for that sign that day. So, of course, because I think in this story, he may have actually been younger than the previous story. You know, as a kid, because kids do these things, what does he do? No, he may have been a little bit older, I don't remember. But regardless, he's a kid. What do kids do, especially if they see a sign like that? Well, they grab some bread and they're going to feed the ducks. That is what's going to happen. Thing is, though, it wasn't ducks out that day. It was geese. Few of you know why that's a bad thing. The few who do are probably going, oh no. Because geese, if you didn't know, can be evil little birds. Not little birds, they're fairly big birds. But they can be evil, okay? Like where I work, sometimes we'll go out to said state park. And just walking the trail that goes around the lake, sometimes you'll pass geese. Sometimes you'll pass them at a distance. Sometimes... They see that distance and they decide they're going to choose violence anyway and suddenly they're putting their wings up and are running at you and hissing and chasing you the rest of the way down the trail. Because I think geese just wake up and most days they do choose violence. If they choose non-violence, that's a rare happy day. 
But so my brother grabbed some bread and he was feeding them. And this wasn't a few geese. It wasn't a couple of geese. I know there were more than 20. I'm sure there were more than two dozen. There were so many geese. And he's feeding them. He's tossing bread out. Well, they start to take notice that he's picking pieces of bread, little bits of it, off of bread that he's holding in his hand. And they decide they want that bread, not what he's tossing on the ground. So the next thing we know, we spot him about right before this happens. And the next thing we know, he is running back up towards the picnic tables where the rest of us are with this terrified look on his face. And there's just a flock of geese chasing him. He runs up past the playground before he finally turns around and just chucks the bread. Chucks the rest of the bread where they can get to it. And it was only then that they finally left him alone. There were still some stragglers that followed after him a little bit further up the, <laughs> up the hill towards, <laughs> towards the picnic tables. But the majority of them did back off after that. And I do remember, I wish we had some pictures of him actually running from them, but I do think that we have pictures somewhere of all the geese. Because there was so many. I don't think he went near the edge of the lake again. I think the rest of the time we were out there, because there were just, there were too many geese. No thank you, he got chased once. And simply put, with those two stories, yeah. My brother didn't get along too much with birds when we were younger. At least not wild birds. Let's put it that way, because we did have some pet birds, and they were very sweet, and he got on with them very well. But I just wanted to share those, because I still, to this day, absolutely love the mental image of Dee just running with this huge flock of geese chasing after him from the water's edge. And it's just... <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even not laugh while I tell it, because it's just hilarious. <laughs> I just, I love it so much and I had to share it with all of you because that's one, those are a couple of my favorite memories of my younger brother. And Dee and Andy and I, we have so many good memories together. And I will be telling a couple of funny ones on Andy as well. She has given me permission, just so you know. And of course, you know, I've told a bunch on me, especially being dumb. So, why not? And I think that could be a lot of fun. And Andy's all over it. She loves the idea. But with that, I'm just going to leave you with a few words of wisdom, and that is, don't feed bread to the geese. Stay away from the geese. The don't feed the ducks and don't feed the animals signs, those are there for a reason. And Dee learned that reason very well. He never fed the ducks and the geese again. But that's about all for this one. I do want to thank my patrons, uh, Salmon and Inside Chaos. I am so grateful for you guys. And I really hope that the both of you enjoy the Patreon revamp when it goes live. I'm still getting the hang of posting regularly on there. I'm currently really bad at it, but we've been very stressed at work lately. And this is the audio that I tried to record last week. And essentially what happened was first I recorded a story, my broken arm story, my broken wrist story, and realized afterwards when I was saving the thumbnail that that's already on the channel. And then I recorded this story only to realize that by accident I hadn't switched it to the good microphone and I had recorded it with the laptop microphone. The problem there being that the audio was literally unusable. It was so staticky and so tinny and so echoey that it was just... There was no plausible way I could use it. But I'm glad to get this story out. I think it's a really fun one. And it's one that just makes me smile. And I hope it made you smile. Now that said, have any of you guys had some interesting encounters with animals? Not, not bad ones, but just ones that made you laugh when you look back on it. Or ones where you're like, oh, I was a dumb kid being a dumb kid. Because those are the fun ones. If you do, I, I would love to hear about them. Or even if you have any ideas of questions you'd like me to answer, or questions that might lead to interesting story time videos, or even topics that you'd want to hear me cover. I would love to hear that kind of stuff. And again, thank you to my patrons, Inside Chaos and Salmon, and I will see you guys next time.